And, uh, of course, the, 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 the solution is Americans stop using drugs. But that's not going to happen. And so uh, it, the transportation of narcotics into the United States uh, from South and Central America and through Mexico is going to continue. But, but folks, think of the magnitude. Put two and two together. They, it, because they can't hide it anymore. They admit they're producing the cocaine and heroin. They're shipping it in. But then cops risk their lives in drug raids and are so busy not going after big dealers that are you have paid off their bosses, that they're raiding people for one joint and now sending CPS to take people's children if they're caught with marijuana for child endangerment. I mean, this is so outrageously in our face. It shows just how criminal this government and its enforcers are. They know exactly what they're doing. I've talked to so many cops, and they say, yeah, we know the government ships most of it in, but... You know, this is our business, and we get money off the seizures, and so we're going to do this. If you decriminalize it, not legalize, decriminalize, all the money goes out of it. I mean, <laughs> Skull and Bones was founded for drug dealing at Yale. I mean, our whole CIA was set up for drug dealing. And to watch them do this to their family, and those cops know full well the government's shipping all that stuff in, Bob. It tears my guts out. Well, you're absolutely right, and they've known for a long, long time I mean, we can go back to Air America during the Vietnam War. Uh, you know, anybody who knew anything about anything knew that uh, the drugs were coming in from Southeast Asia from the CIA. Okay, shifting gears. I have a Twitter question uh, here from Info Assurance One. Should we be pulling our money out of 401ks completely if the dollar collapses? What does it matter? And, and, and I want to dovetail that. With Bloomberg and others, more and more articles, when you hear austerity, folks... What they've told Greece is they want half of people's 401ks and their pensions to pay the banks. The people don't even owe the money. Merkel, uh, the German president, is saying blast treacherous banks in Greece, says it's all rigged. So, so the president of Germany uh, is now, or the chancellor of Germany, uh, is now saying this. Uh, what can you say to people about the plan to get the pension funds? We know they've had uh, hearings. And uh, we, of course, we're not invited. And uh, and the government's going to decide, if anything, what they're going to do. Uh, for the time being, they may not do anything. Uh, what I've instructed uh, subscribers to do is wait and see if the government's going to do anything. And even if they do, will it be in the form of a 5% tax so the money will be held for you in your uh, governmental uh, annuity to be paid out when you retire? Or will it be a partial uh, voluntary uh, effort uh, by pension holders to uh, uh, pledge uh, part of or all of uh, their uh, retirement to one of these governmental annuities. Well, that's what Bloomberg said. They said regulators are ordering private pension funds to invest with them. That's a command and control economy right there. That's right, but that's different than this. And so... I've told people, let's wait till the shoe to drop. Now, what you're talking about is instructions from the federal government to pension and profit sharing plans. You will buy Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginny Mae, FHA, and U.S. Treasury paper. That's it. Which is an even That's better way doing. to steal it. I mean, because the Bloomberg article said making them buy failed banks, making them buy assets that, in that failed banks. Too. And incidentally, in your comment on Germany, um, I, I, I have here the information on the Bilderbergers who are within the German government. Of course, Chancellor Merkel, uh, Foreign Minister uh, Vestavel, uh, Finance Minister Wolfgang Schauble, uh, Social Democrat uh, Walter Steinmeier, and uh, Green Party Opposition Leader Chem Ortsmeier. And so you've got to say to yourself, the deck is packed. And what is going on right now is the German people are against the bailout, 63%. Uh, number two, uh, Mrs. Merkel and uh, the Bundes, uh, Bundesrat have approved uh, the money going uh, with other money. So she's just uh, acting like she's upset because of the election. That's right. 
All right, let's go to calls. Uh, let's talk to Matt in Ohio. Matt, thanks for holding her on the air. Go ahead. Thanks, Alex. Um, this question is for both of you. I was uh, doing some uh, uh, day trading yesterday, um, and of course was watching when the uh, stock market went down. Uh, two quick points I wanted to make. One, um, my trading platform was did allow me to uh, get a trade in uh, during those four or five minutes. So I don't know if it was um, uh, you know maybe the, or my platform was missed by whatever shutdown went on, or maybe the shutdown was basically just you know online servers being overloaded by all the volume. Uh, second point is one thing I hadn't noticed uh, anyone talking about that exact same four or five minutes where you had that. You know, just massive 700-point drop in the Dow, you know, 70-point drop in the S&P. You also saw an unprecedented uh, spike, particularly in one currency, and that was, uh, that was the yen. It was, it was um, almost an order of magnitude greater than uh, the rise in most of the other currencies, like the dollar. The dollar was up, I think, around three-quarters of a percent at that time. The yen was up like six or seven percent, uh, which is huge. And... I was curious to get your take. Um, do you think people were using yen to short the market just to buy a, you know, bids on the cheap, or, do, or you know, something else that occurred to me? Maybe this is, uh, you know, that's a great question. Reason. That's a great question, Bob. Well, the yen went from ninety three sixty three the day before on the close to eighty nine eighty eight, which is a point zero four three zero uh, change, which is phenomenal. And so they had to be using yen to, do, to be doing the shorting in the market. Okay, great question, Matt. Thanks for calling. Fred, Lisa, Joe, Craig, and others. We're going to jam you all in in our final segment with Bob Chapman. I'll continue with your phone calls uh, on what happened yesterday and what this signals in the future. We have a managed, organized, rigged, global financial market for the fat six banks. Well, the, the nation's in trouble are Ireland, England, Portugal, Spain, followed by Italy, and in Western Europe. Uh, but there's some mag unbelievable problems in Eastern Europe, uh, in the Ukraine. Uh, they're having riots there, but they're not reporting them, uh, because I had somebody in another program call in for the Ukraine yesterday and say, you know, you people don't know this because they're not reporting it, but they have riots here. And then you've got Japan and Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Romania, Hungary, uh, 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 Argentina, and incidentally, Brazil is uh, about to get absolutely inundated in inflation. And then we have Venezuela, Ecuador, and Bolivia that are going to run into trouble with their communist dictatorships. And you'll also have a new communist dictator in Uruguay as well. And so all over the world, we're going to have countries that are going to go bankrupt, including the United States. Let's jam in some more calls here. Let's talk to Fred in Iowa. Fred, thanks for holding. Welcome. Hey, hey um, I was stupid for not getting an uh, international forecaster, but I'm a very small fry uh, day trader, and I only trade uh, gold and silver stocks, and I'm hold, holding my own with a little gain. Did I pull everything out, or should I continue trading gold stocks, which I seem to be doing so-so? Well, I think you should continue to trade them, and when in doubt, stay long. Well, got you there. Uh, I thought I had some uh, good news from Iowa, but I don't know. Well, thank you, Alex, and thank you, Bob, and God bless you both. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Yeah, they normally just run down gold for a few days, a few weeks, but in the watch the trend, it only goes up. Uh, let's talk to uh, Lisa in Georgia. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, how are you? I happen to be a new listener. I happen to run across your videos on YouTube, and I've sort of been in an information rut. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask is, um, what about silver? I hear a lot on your show about from Bob Chapman, and hi, how are you, Bob, um, about buying silver and gold. I mean, should you buy equal amounts? Should you buy more silver? I'm Confused well, I know that. what I do personally. I buy more gold than silver, probably 75% gold, 25% silver. I don't give advice. That's what I would do, Bob. I did the same thing the other day. I bought six silver coins, and uh, I bought seven gold coins, and the gold coins were one ounce. So we're talking about uh, $10,000. So I do about 
25% uh, silver and 75% gold coins. I didn't know that. One I of the reasons is a weight, if nothing else. Yeah, there's the portability. It, it's, it, you can move gold a lot easier and, and hide it a lot easier than you can silver. I've been having a hard time convincing my husband. We have quite a bit of money in the market, and I'm a bit, I'm very worried. So, and every day I watch your, I listen to your radio show. I just feel like it just things just, there's just something new every day. There's more. There's a lot. I can't even keep up. Well, with he that. should at least hedge his bet and buy some bullion. I mean, doesn't he know gold seven years ago was 300 bucks an ounce? Yeah, um, we're military, but you know, and he's been gone a lot and in and out. So, but. You know what you should do? You know what you should do? Have, email me your phone number and I'll call him. <laughs> Bob will do that, too. He's and believe else. me. And I do a military program every Thursday, and I've done it for almost five years. 